Okay. Um, okay, I'm recording now, so let's make a, a formal introduction uh, for our listener. Uh, good afternoon, Manuel. My name is Claudio. I'm calling you from Washington, D.C. Uh, from the students of Fairfax City, we are very humble and grateful that Manuel Boshin accepted our invitation to our show. Manuel, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Well, let, let's go with the beginning. This has been a, a weird year for everybody with the, the COVID, the pandemic. You know, some countries are better than others and so forth. How have been, how the COVID has affected your, your sanity, your ability to go out, the inability to, you know, play shows, how is it affecting you? Well, generally, it's not that bad because it's mostly affecting only the concerts uh, because uh, I had some nice concerts which had to be uh, postponed or cancelled in uh, Cologne at the Philharmonic at the three four. There was one in London at the Barbican Center uh, that should have been the first time performing um, New Age of Earth music entire from the entire album. I never did that. I, I just played parts of it. And so yeah, this is not happening. Um, I was very lucky I could play a concert last September, one year ago. There was a break in the COVID restrictions in Denmark and Copenhagen with this band um, uh, uh, Circlin that are six uh, guitar players and we performed yep. The inventions for electric guitar. It was really great, and they were all very happy and uh, really excited that we came. And so it was nice. Yeah. And now I will play in next next week, uh, yeah. next Saturday, the 26th. I will perform with uh, Achim Rodelius. Yeah, of course. At uh, here in Berlin, uh, it's also very interesting because, of course, I know Achim for. 50 years, uh, we were not big friends, but we always met here and there over the years, and yeah. but we never performed together. And, and this is a, a, a festival um, if to remember this legendary club Zodiac in Berlin, which was initially established by Conny Schnitzler. Yeah. I never performed there. I was I was a bit too young. I knew a little bit about that. Um, my my music period or my music location in Berlin at the time was the Beef Studio, where I was uh, rehearsing and playing. Uh, but anyway, I found it a nice idea to perform with Achim now, and he's yeah. getting now is 86. So okay. It's an interesting experience. He will only play piano, and I will only play acoustic uh, concert guitar. So <laughs> it might be an interesting experiment. And we never, we never rehearsed or used. <laughs> or you never rehearsed, Ray, until now? No, he has not. No, he lives in Austria, and uh, I live in Berlin. He will come and on the Saturday, on the Sunday, and. Uh, which there was a scheduled a small uh, sound check in the morning, two hours, but unfortunately the same Saturday, uh, the same Sunday, is also the Berlin Marathon. So the whole city is closed, and there's no way to meet and to, to, for me to come into the near to this place to make a sound check. It's only open again in the evening, so I can only come in the evening. My God! <laughs> so, yeah, so we just meet, and it's, it's really an improvisation <laughs> from scratch. <Yeah. laughs> and I hope I just, it's, it's I exactly want, in the, in the original spirit of the Zodiac. Are you going to be playing your stuff, or or Hans, or a combination of? of we the just group? play what we want to play. So we we don't talk about it. <laughs> that's that, that's even better, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like the, like the the Ashra Temple days, you know when yes, improvisation right, yeah. there and uh, sometimes the best comes from our improvisation, you know it's uh, yeah so it's it's just a free freestyle uh, event and so uh, let's see what happens and I think it's really in the style and uh, in the 
reflecting the original ideas of Cornish Mittler, making this place to meet musicians, to start playing music without any thing, thing before, or just just trying test and uh, sure. Uh, yeah, that's still good. But apart from the concert, we, it's not so diff It was not so difficult because we have uh, I had uh, my own labor for many years, and so. This is uh, okay. So we re-released uh, last year. I have re-released this, this album, which uh, last concert with Claude Schulze there, at the London uh, uh, Royal Festival Hall again, and also on a video on a uh, CD, DVD, and vinyl. Now we are making the uh, starting with the re-release on vinyl with all the Ashra Temple albums. Now we have the Schwingung. This this guy, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's for the fifth edition, right? Yes, and this will be uh, on very nice cover. We have it already, but we had to postpone the the, the release because there were so many uh, 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 people. Order. There were so many orders that we could not. Uh, we had to repress immediately. And so we postponed that we could deliver all over the world at the same time. So uh, yeah. it's now in November. And next year we will have the Ashka Temple, the first with this beautiful folded cover, uh, the original, and uh, yeah, and then the other ones step by step. And well, there's a lot to do. But, you know. Yeah, good, good busy. Yeah. But anyway, in private. Private, I don't care so much about it. We we are very relaxed and we live. Uh, uh, we don't. We see our our children, our grandchildren, family. That's all. And so we don't go out. And, you know, so. Yeah. Well, hopefully, all the album. Hopefully, that particular album uh, is going to be ready in the store in December. We don't know, right? It should be in, in the United States. It should be, uh, yeah. I think, from beginning 5th of November or 10th of November. Yeah. 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 I, I, I own about 12 CDs from you, uh, uh -huh. but, uh, but I, I don't have any albums. So when I'm going to, when I'm when I fly to Berlin in December, I want to go to the first thing I do, go to the record store, the biggest one in Berlin, and then buy all of them. Because I love you. I like vinyl and I like CDs. I like, you know, different things. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah. let's go yeah. back to the beginning. Uh, where were you, Manuel? Were you born like in a in a musical family? Mm -hmm. I mean, how old were you when you began? I don't know, playing piano or or, or taking guitar lessons. Uh, yes, it was not really a musical family. My father was an engineer, but he was, uh, uh, yes, he also played piano. He taught me to, to, to play chess. Uh, funny. Yeah. And his father, he, he played a guitar, he was painting very nice. Um, he was also an engineer, but uh, he just for Private in private, she, she played a little guitar, and she I saw my first guitar I had I had from him, and so I just fooled around with guitar and piano when I was young, when I was a child, and yeah, and later I had uh, real uh, yeah I was trained classic guitar, I had lessons for many years, and yeah, classical guitar. Uh, and uh, my mother had a musical background. She was an actress uh, as a child. Yeah, uh, she played. She was. She had training in acting, dancing, singing. Uh, but only when she was she she quit when she was ten or eleven years old. So she didn't. She, probably, she played some theater, even in some films. Yeah. My yeah. brother was very musical. He played an organ. He played organ in the biggest church in Berlin here in this old. Um, Broken Church, the Kaiser Wilhelm Gedächtnis Kirche, he was the organ player for some time. And there are many um, organ, church organ players, uh, theological uh, trained, or theological uh, in the family of my mother. My mother loved operas and uh, we went to, to cinema, we went to theaters and to see, and so I became. Uh, uh, I, I, I learned 
to know about the Verdi, Puccini, Rossini, all these uh, Italian opera, French opera. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, yeah. But I also like pop music. Uh, pop music. The, the the term pop music was not existing at the time. It was rock, pop, yeah. rock and roll. Yeah, no rock music. It was rock and roll, and then it was later. It was beat music. Yeah, that was the sixties. And for me, the biggest influence in popular music was of course the sixties when I grew up and I was a teenager, and I. Um, but yeah, a lot of soul music and, and blues and rhythm and blues and of course the early Rolling Stones because this type and uh, so it was a lot of sixties music. Yeah. And they had a good radio station in Berlin because West Berlin was uh, had radio stations from the Allied forces. There was an American radio, there was a British radio, a French radio station. And uh, the German radio stations that were not playing very nice and very interesting music. <laughs> <laughs> they were playing mostly German German style Schlager, or uh, they were covering a lot of music with uh, radio orchestras, jazz orchestras. This is still a lot of jazz, a big jazz orchestras. And of course, for the young people, it was not really attractive. So we listened to radios abroad and uh, yeah that, that was slowly the uh, my, my training my ear training okay. well, well, which one was your uh did you were involved in any band uh, before the ashra temple when you were in the in the gymnasium with some friend i i believe that you Um, yeah, be before Ashura Temple, you. Before, yeah, yeah, of course. It was first. It was first. It was um, with my school friend Hartmut Enke. Yeah. Uh, we found we found a band in school, uh, a, a cover band, just for fun, and we played uh, cover versions of yeah the music that we like, Rolling Stones or Beatles or whatever. I think. With yard birds or uh, small faces, uh, I, I, I remember some. And we, we had some concerts, performances at uh, school parties or so, birthday parties. And, yeah. and then, but we, we both like to develop, and it was soon getting a little boring to play all these tunes, so we wanted to play our own stuff, but we didn't know at all how to do it. And, uh, so we tried, and then we tried a very, a very experimental band, a freestyle band called Bad Joe. We had uh, just improvising from the beginning. We had no, no training or no ideas. I started to, in the first band. I was a singer, by the way. I was not playing guitar. Really? Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although I, did, I didn't understand all the all the English lyrics, but I tried to make my own interpretation. <laughs> That's good. It didn't matter. It was just fun that everybody yeah. liked. <laughs> yeah. I understand, understand. And then I started because I rejected to play electric guitar because I was playing the classical guitar, and I said this is something completely different. Yeah, completely, not not only in playing, but styles and finger technique. And, so I didn't know anything about electric guitar. But then in 1968, I started uh, playing electric and uh, yeah, playing with improvisation. And, uh, and then we switched a little to, to make a little, um, to get a little more into composition or into structure, into music, not only making a lot of noise, yeah, but trying to, yeah, to, to, to bring it into some forms. We were we, we all loved blues very much. We were influenced by English blues musicians, the, the blues breakers from Mayo and all these guitar players, Nick Taylor and then uh, Clapton of course, later Cream. And, uh, and so we tried yeah to, to bring it together with our in our own style. Yeah, some we, we, we had a band, we called it the steeplechase blues band which was 
not not a blues band there, but we use blues as a, as a kind of scheme for for some parts of it, but the rest is all improvised. And, um, yeah, and out of this, then uh, Aspar Temple was made uh, created in summer 1970, and uh, no, it was just another step. We left some blues away, but it was all a very logic step. And, Basically, the whole story is a story of the two school friends, Hartmut Enke and Marvin uh, for many years. And so uh, we played uh, yeah, 1973, we made the last concert and then the clip. What, what was the reason that uh, Hartmut Enke ended up leaving uh, you know, the band and he wanted to do his own stuff? No, he didn't want to perform. Oh, he didn't want to play professionally. He didn't want to make it his job, his business. Uh, he didn't like it. He was in spiritual uh, spheres, and uh, so he was thinking about just one note playing, one uh, one uh, frequency, which includes all ideas of the whole world. <laughs> so, Interesting ideas, but nobody <laughs> listened to it. So uh, he had, yeah, it, it was a way with with Ashma Temple, then with uh, uh, the second album Schwingung, then came the uh, uh, Seven Up album with Timothy Leary, and then the last one joined in with him and did some concerts. And, uh, he was he was not he, he didn't want to do it professionally and he, he didn't like commercial approach and to be on time to be uh, on stage at eight o'clock so he wanted to play when he likes it and if it's six o'clock or ten o'clock or maybe not today then tomorrow but of course you, you cannot play concert <laughs> <laughs> of course uh, <laughs> Yeah, he I, made I, some. He made some private. Uh, I think he made some some private uh, echo, some private uh, uh, playing uh, with friends for over the years. He met over many years from time to time, but uh, and it was funny in in the year two thousand when I made his last concert with Klaus. Yeah. Uh, we were both thinking of maybe inviting Hartmut to join us, um, but we were both, yeah, we thought it's, it's really not possible because we were just having to look after him for every second and be very anxious and very, you know, uh, and I think he wouldn't have done it. Uh, he would have said yes, yes, but next day he would have forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you cannot run, you know, a company or 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 a business like that. But but in yeah, a way, that, you know, after that he period, was okay with it. he was uh, he liked it. He was okay, and he liked it, and he didn't miss it, and so he was happy with his life. Uh, he had, he was free, and so he was he, he really went out of the normal rules of society, so as far as possible. And yeah, so, okay. so many people call him, he's not insane or it, but I never thought so. He's just well, consequently doing his life, how he wanted it. <laughs> sure, sure. And, and, but, but after after a period of Ashra Temple, right, that gave you the opportunity to begin playing on your own and, and you produce um, you know, fantastic music, you know, so. It was a period to for you to go on your own and begin doing your own thing with with the guitar and then with the keyboards and so it's a you know that way it was a good opportunity for you to um, you know to play your own thing and, and uh, develop other you know more more uh, on the guitar and in more the beginning, the in the beginning I was very uh, I found it very sad to, to, to have this, to, to lose this band, because I always liked to play in a group, and like this atmosphere, and like this uh, being together and playing, and so for me the band was very important. But, but uh, and I tried to, to continue with it, with other musicians, but 
it, it was difficult and was uh, so it was not the original anymore and so it was more that I became the boss and the others were the members of the group uh, like an orchestra yeah. so, <laughs> well I was a chief and, and the others were my musicians uh, so it was not a not a balanced uh, group you know, of old things so, and then I decided yeah, I can have something on my own solo and uh, I was uh, at the time I was influenced by by early uh, American minimum music musicians like Terry Riley and uh, Big Glass Big Five. There was especially Terry Riley. I think I've seen him or I heard some of his early records, Rainbow and Earth Air, you know. And he was also performing in Berlin in the beginning of the 70s. And I was really fascinated how he played with very little equipment, just with an electric organ and then with some tech delays and how he managed to make all these patterns yeah. and airs and so because he was just a great player, or he still is. And uh, so I thought, wow, well, that's maybe something I can I can, yeah, I, I'm a guitar player, so maybe I should try that with a guitar, yeah. And that was the idea with uh, inventions for electric guitar in this, this minimal pattern-like composition. And the other one was that I just used the guitar as the only sound uh, source. Uh, so every, every sound is confused just with this one guitar. And uh, my first production, I, I found it at my after small solo studio. It was a small production, which I bought from, I guess, from my company. I got a portrait recorder and a portrait recorder. And so I could, for three months, I could try it, I could test it, I could record it in my own place. And, uh, yeah, it was great. And then I went to mix, I went to the third studio in Cologne. And then I continued first with, I played one, one year with uh, another great musician that I knew from early times from Berlin, from the band uh, Educated Free. That was with Ulbrich. And I, uh, yeah, I invited him or he, we, we, we somehow got together and uh, he was the, his, his group, Education Free, has just uh, finished uh, and uh, so uh, we played some, we played for one year, we played quite a lot of concerts in France and London in the style of, of inventions, but also exploring it a little bit further. And then again, I made the next solo album that I quit nearly from the guitar. And I, uh, I started playing keyboards, composing for keyboards, and starting with the synthesizer. Uh, this was New Age of Earth. Yeah, so it went step by step. Uh, yeah, okay. that, that, that album, the, the invention for electric guitar, uh, is, is unbelievable. It's, I, I have listened to this one, I don't know, like 30 times, and it's very good stuff. Thank you. I never, you know, I never get bored, you know, like E2 E4, I listen to. Many, many times. But every time I discover new things. But uh, and after that, you end up, um, you know, free to elaborate on the album Seven uh, and the involvement with uh, Timothy Leary on this album. I, I actually, by the way, I did have the opportunity to interview uh, uh, Steve Soider uh, like a couple of months ago, and, and, and he said his regards. So he said what? He's he's he said he said hello. He said his regards. Uh huh. <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think he's he's in um he's he lives in Switzerland now. It's now in Germany. A very nice person. Yeah. He's very nice. Yeah, I I think I didn't I had some contact with him. He lives in he lived all the years in, in Freiburg, which is near the very close to Switzerland. But maybe he moved to Switzerland. Uh, and he played some solo album. And, uh, it's 
yes, actually uh, a, a trained uh, uh, organ player, I found out, classic organ player. So I didn't know that at the time. We met, we met Steve uh, through Tangerine Dream because he performed with Tangerine Dream. He played one or two albums and yep. concerts and uh, so, but then, yeah, he left Tangerine Dream. And for Seven Up, we were looking for more, it was again Hartnett and me, the band there, yeah, so, and we were looking for more bigger uh, set for, for, for more musicians to, to have a bigger band, to, to have a bigger lineup with some singers and uh, yeah, Steve and Alden, another drummer, and so, and uh, yeah, but we only played this, um, we only recorded this album and we never played uh, any concerts. You gotcha. And uh, I noticed that in the, um, the invention for the electric guitar, it's a lot more as structure, a structure composition, you know, as compared to the period with Astra Tempo, uh, where they were more free spirit. Do, do you like doing? having like a more structure or a base so you can go around that or you prefer to be more free spirit like the Asha Tempo days is you prefer one over the other or or, or you like no, I like both it depends on on the situation or it depends on on yeah what no I, I like I, I did really uh, very structured propositions like for example a New Age of Earth, the title Sunwing, there's nearly every note is composed uh, very strictly. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it depends sometimes. And I like uh, structures like uh, the invention, which is, well, there's a basic structure, but there's room to improvise. Uh, so this is, um, this is also what, what uh, impressed me with minimalist of uh, like Riley or Baish, that they have a, a basic structure, but uh, they, are, they can always vary, or the patterns can vary, so it's not, it's not a complete uh, score in this way. Uh, I like both, yeah, but I also like sometimes, as I said before, I like uh, now the idea of playing with Achim. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> guitar. Sure. Uh, anything. Yeah. yeah. This, yeah, the, the, the album, the, the new age is, 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 is beautiful. It's, all your stuff is very good, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like, I like, I've been, I've been following your music for many years, Manuel. So I, I, uh, uh I'm, you know, happy that, um, up, yeah, with uh, New Age of Earth, I was a bit, uh, yeah, I had enough of guitar, so I tried to switch a little bit, and I, I tried to switch a little bit to playing keyboard, because with keyboard on, on the keys or on the piano, yeah. you get different ideas in composing uh, notes than on the guitar. It's a different technical system. And what I also like is the uh, introduction of synthesizer sounds. Uh, because it gives you more yeah, variety also in, in performing it uh, or recording instruments or different instruments. I never liked the, what later became very popular. I, I never wanted to, um, to imitate orchestras or to imitate instruments. I like this, this kind of old stuff, uh, uh, string ensembles there yeah, or, or pianos they don't sound really like a piano but they sound somehow electronic but it's something special <laughs> so it's, it's a sound. all what i also like is some, to produce something that you cannot do with another instrument uh, so to just for example what i played on the second side of night dust of New York, of Earth, the second side in the beginning there's a solo of uh, of, a, of an EMS synthesizer, which is just a uh, tone from the uh, from an oscillator, which moves up and down. So this is nothing you could ever write into a score, or, or a, there's no other instrument of where you can play something like this. 
And that's what I like. Uh, so I was always experimental, and, and I never wanted to. I always try to make with the next album something different. That was the next one was then blackout. So I was impressed by again by um, yes, a bit more like popular music, and uh, I came back to the guitar and I wanted to have more guitars again. So, I got you, got you. How do you, how did you end up meeting um, uh, Klaus Schulz and then your feeling about playing live with him? I, I know he's not doing. He's not doing very well, you know, Klaus. So. Yeah. No, he completely uh, retired in a way. He doesn't yeah. perform anymore. Um, yeah, but at the time, it was good. I mean, we stayed. I, I, I like it that we stayed somehow in contact. I mean, I, I was. Yeah, I found it sad in the beginning because I, he was really a fantastic drummer for the original Last of Champions. So I liked that especially, uh, but I understood that he wanted to go on and to develop more, uh, not always playing drums, he wanted to play uh, electronic and composition and different things. So I understood. Um, but we stayed in contact, and uh, so we met. Uh, he invited me for some concerts in, in the 80s, but I was with a tour with him. And I played on some of his albums, and so last concert <coughs> I invited him for, for this uh, uh, concert at the Royal Festival Hall, which was uh, managed by Julian Cole, and he asked me if I would like to perform something. And uh, Julian had uh, had written this legendary book, Outward Sampler. And uh, so he was very fond of very early after Templar, so I thought it's a good idea. Maybe I asked Klaus if he would like to join me and perform again under the name of Templar. And he agreed, and that, that was the last time. We got in contact afterwards, but it never happened to another concert. Yeah, so, uh, but it was always nice to play with him. And, uh, uh, at the, at the time you were with Virgin Record, right? And then uh, was the time you were working in stereo and then you put your famous um, E2, E4 album. And then, by the way, this is the only version that I found live. I don't think there are many, there are no many recordings of E2, E2, E4 uh, live. I think that's the only one I ended up buying that in, in Tokyo, in Japan. So you end up leaving. Uh, feel free to tell the story. You end up leaving Vision Record, I think. You have a contact with them, and then you put uh, E2 4 together. Uh, you know, you, you went to talk to the boss. And then I think I thought, oh, man, this is some, an unbelievable album. And you decided not to release it with them and, and wait for a while, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, by the way, to the, to the versions you showed, uh, the original, there's the original. This, this other version that you have, this is uh, with an orchestra. Oh, I don't have, yeah, I only have this one, the original, right? And then the, the one live. Is there in Germany another one with an orchestra? Uh, this is not, this is with an orchestra performance. It's a town of Lefty's orchestra in, in Berlin. Yeah. A performance, uh, which is very special because it's, an, it's a kind of uh, acoustic version. Yeah, it's with uh, I got you, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was very interesting because this, these musicians, they are all trained classic musicians and they perform modern music from Sienakis or Cage or something like this in, uh, in this direction. And they like this piece and they invited me for one of the concerts. There's another official case was uh, also from Japan. The first, the first uh, live, record, live performance in Japan was 2006 at a big festival, Metamorphose Festival. And from this festival, there is a, a CD and a DVD. Uh, existing. It's also uh, in, in our catalog. So 
Oh, maybe I need to get it. Okay, I will need to go to that website. Yes, you can. I can send you one. Yeah, I give you one when it comes to the way. Yeah, but I can. We will. Yeah, we will. Yeah, definitely. And uh, so, um, yeah. so, so you you went. So after when you put it. Yes, I had to. I had version. I had four albums. Like the yeah. Music. My new age of earth was first not on Virgin, it was released in France on a very small label. Yeah. But very, very successful. And because of this success, I got a huge contract with Virgin worldwide. And then Virgin re released uh, the new age with a different cover uh, on Virgin worldwide. And then I made the second one, Blackout. And then I performed again with Ash, with, with, uh, with Ulrich and Harald Brotkopf under the name Ashra. We made two albums, uh, uh, Correlations and Bella Downs, uh, 1979 and 1980. And uh, so the contract was, uh, was a, the contract with Virgin was with an option. And yep. when I had the E3 core was in the beginning, it was not intended or not really recorded to be my next album. Yeah. Uh, it was just one of many, many sessions I played in my studio for many years. And uh, yeah, and, wow, it was great. And everybody said, wow, oh, you must believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, okay. Uh, Initially, I wanted to make a different composition for my for my next solo album. So, but then I had this tape and thought, well, it's not so bad. Maybe I should try. So I went to Virgin Records, uh, but Virgin had became become so huge, so big company. In the beginning, they were small independent uh, uh, English uh, company for very independent music. They had a lot of reggae music, they had electronic. And in short, the electronic music, they had also uh, this kind of art, uh, uh, village and some, some um, uh, Hatred and the North, so some psychedelic groups from, from, uh, from English uh, countries, in the English outside of London. And uh, so, this in years, they became so really uh, a very, yeah. Big, big company for you know, commercial company for chart music. Uh, uh, it was a big, a big success with Women League and Dr. Simonovra. This is new electronic or uh, new, new wave. It was quite a new wave in, in England. And then uh, they they, they released Boards uh, of Orange and uh, all the matter. So they were really indifferent to the different people. I could not imagine that they were really interested in music like it would be for a piece of two chords uh, for yeah. six minutes. And, uh, which, uh, yeah, you could not even put it on the record really because it's too long and hard to make it. <laughs> so I think. Uh, they would have bought it from me for some advance, and then it would have disappeared somewhere. Uh, never had seen the writing. And uh, I went to see Richard Brandon. It was funny because he just had a, had his new baby on his arm, and he wanted to listen to some short a little bit here. And I played him a small MC cassette. At the time, we always had cassettes, a small MC cassette. And, uh, and the baby fell asleep, and, was really blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and, uh, and then he said to me these nice words that, man, you know, you can make a fortune with this music. <laughs> 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 I said, okay. So I took the tape and went back to Berlin and thought, maybe, maybe some other time or maybe some other place. And then it was by accident, and two years later, that uh, Klaus wrote that he came he was quite often in Berlin at the time because he had connections and so many friends. And, and he told me that he wanted to uh, establish a new label, but a very, he had sold his first label, the team, yeah. which had become uh, a very big label, and it was too much for him. He didn't want it with him. 
so he wanted to create a new, very small label that therefore the name in team. Uh, <clears throat> and he asked me if I would uh, join uh, with some of my music. But then I remember the week before or the tape and uh, uh, then it was released very small, very low, on a very low level, and it started to increase over the years. It was bigger, 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 bigger. It was rather <laughs> always increasing. That's right. It, it, would, have been, yeah. there, it would have been uh, impossible to anticipate the, the success that that album that is sit on sit in your hard drive for a couple of years before, you know, Klaus Schroeder took over and, and now I was, now I hear other interviewer that it plays on discos and in playing New York and, you know, it, it, you say, wow, that yeah, could be a be... story that uh, in yeah. the beginning it was um, in Germany or here in Berlin, I got very, very bad reviews that I missed everything in, a, in the development. I should better listen to the Pesh Mode. They know the modern electronic. And, well, nothing against the Pesh Mode, but this is something yeah. very different. And uh, funny is that many years later, I found out that the, the manager or later the record chief of the Pesh Mode, he was he was uh, at our Ashba concert in Regent's Park in 1977. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he, he was very attracted by the music. Maybe not by our music, but by the style to play with uh, drums and sequences, synthesizers, and you know, so that well, was an influence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but funny thing about E3-4 is also the um, the title or the name in 3-4, I had before, before I had the music. Yeah. Uh, it came up to me one day when, when I was thinking only about one part of from the chess game, this, this opening, the very most popular opening from the chess game is 3-4. That's right. Uh, but uh, there was also a relation when my first experience was computers, I had a small Apple personal computer and I was trying to to, to, to uh, program it and to make my own program, to write programs in this language basic and then machine language. Then you get used to hexadecimal systems which count to uh, not only to 10 but to 16 with, with letters A, B, C, D, E, F. And then make combinations of letters and, uh, yeah, and then name little programs with this uh, letter and uh, number. This was the second. And the third was uh, from, taken from uh, the first uh, Star Wars film was uh, out. And I mean, I've seen it. And I, there was this little robot called r 2 g So this is also a combination of letter and number. And it's, yeah, it's a robot, uh, but it's also a program. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So I thought I said, E3-4 is a great part. Sure. But maybe one day I have a nice music, and then I call it E3-4. <laughs> so when some years later I had to E3-4, I had to take, I said, okay, this is the right take to call it. Yeah. So, so you mentioned that. Other way, it, it's most of the time it's the other way around. You have some music, great music, and then you think, oh, but I have to find a name for the music. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What do I call it music? So you mentioned before that, you know, although for all of us, you know, E2, E4 is very important. You, for you, was one of many, right? That you were at the time. Are 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 there others? I mean, when, at the time you put. E2, E4, you did have many other records, I mean, many other recordings, right? And you, you went to Virgin and you showed them. them. Is, is there, is there, well, maybe your hard drive or your computer, you might have other treasures that you, nobody in the world has seen, it, you know? Or no? Yeah. You go, no, you go the, back to the old stuff and, and listen to... Uh, yes, sometimes, yes. Well, I, I, yes, I still have some, or quite a few in my archives. Uh, 
I had released in, in, in the 90s, six, the six uh, CDs, private, the private tape. Yeah, uh, this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best of, that's a double. This is the best of. The other, the other, the other four, there's a series of six. They are two, 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 and then the best. The other are very hard to get. Well, that was a that was a limited edition, and it uh, uh, was sold yeah. out after some months, and uh, so we never made it again. This uh, is very good stuff. Very good stuff. Yeah. I need to get the other one. I to re-release that too. Yeah. So uh, yeah. this this is still uh, out of out of print, and uh, this is one of the next that I will make uh, that we will make on my label. Yeah. And. Uh, <clears throat> There's also uh, there, there were cons uh, on the original. There are some re concept rec original concept recordings with Klaus and Hartmut and me. And yep. uh, I still have the original tapes, and I want to make also a series of these uh, five or six concerts uh, original uh, original from 1970 or 71. Have you have you ever played here in the United States, Manuel, or not? Have you played yes. here? Uh, uh, yes, I, I have. Uh, I performed in 2008 in New York. In New York, right? Yeah. Yes, I was invited for a festival of, which was also celebrating minimal music. Uh, and this was at the uh, at the Lincoln Center, open air, outdoor. There were about ten thousand people, nine thousand or ten thousand people in the rain, and it was uh, uh, it, it was accompanied by the Joshua Light Show. I don't know. Do you know the Joshua Light Show? No. No. Okay, you missed it because Joshua, light, Joshua made light show in the 1969, 1970 at Fillmore East. Oh, I see. Fillmore East was a legendary club where everyone was performing. It was created by Bill. Bill uh, nah, what was his name? Bill, uh, Bill Graham. Yeah. Bill Graham was one of the biggest promoters in the. In the, in the you know, it's, it's first made a, a film more west in San Francisco, where uh, the uh, uh, Jack the Jack performed, that was an airplane, then Santana, and, oh, I see, I see, yeah. and, uh, and then he founded the uh, uh, film more west, and it was really everyone, like that, that, that Jimi Hendrix, uh, that's a legendary Jimi Hendrix recording from film more west at uh, New Year's Eve, 1970. Yeah. Okay, before, so the who, uh, and Joshua was doing a light show. He created a light show with, with his uh, uh, slides and projection from behind the, 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 the typical psychedelic light show that uh, is really, uh, really popular everywhere. And that this was really installed and fixed in this place. Uh, it was a set of December, so I would say it, it was built in the theater, so it was not for so moving. And uh, so he made this for two or three years, but then he retired. And no, he not retired. He stopped it, but he went to TV. He was many years in TV, and after that, he made interesting programs in TV. And then he retired, and then he found back to making live shows, and he created the game live shows. And someday I got a contact with him, and he contacted yep. me and said if we would like to make something together. And I was really shocked or fascinated because of, I mean, I'm much younger, and uh, so I was I was not the speaking Sure, sure. Yeah. And, uh, so he said. Yeah, he had he some, some shows in Italy, but it was too short for me. So, and then one year later, I had this uh, uh, invitation from the Lincoln Center to perform, and then I thought, well, maybe we can go in there. So, I asked him if he would like to join. He liked the idea. 
So we performed in this big, big outdoor place with a huge uh, uh, shell as a, as a uh, uh, stage, on stage, a kind of shell in the background, with a big stage with a, with a big orchestra. So I, I was performing solo between four. Uh, I was the only musician and there were seven people from the light show. On stage, uh, usually it's the other way around. It's seven musicians and one is doing the live show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have recordings from that. We have a video. That, uh, and I played two more concerts. I played one in Philadelphia. Oh. Uh, it's from a guy, uh, Jacques Fonzieux. He has a radio station for many years, radio programs, I think. Uh, and then I also performed. Um, a club concert in, uh, with uh, um, Joe, Joe, Clau Joe Clausel. He's a famous DJ and producer and he arranger and mixer. And, and he owned this club and uh, I invited him for my birthday party in Berlin. And when I was in New York, I played at his club. I didn't play before that, but I played a mixed program. That's very nice concert. Yeah. I like this one. We had prepared, uh, no, not prepared. We had, we were in discussion with somebody last year for making tours again, and uh, he wanted to look for dates and then arrange something. But then Corona came up and uh, so Yeah, well, so yeah, little by little. So after after the the you know after the concert with with Hans Rodilius. Uh, next week, uh, is there um, an agenda for you to, you know, there are new events coming up from, you know, 2022, as far as you know, would you like to do a series of a concert in, in Berlin or in, or in German general, or is there a plan for that? Or? Um, yeah, no, with concerts, I don't know, the concert in Cologne, Philharmonic, this will be played as soon as possible, so it's now delayed for nearly two years, but they still hold on it and they want to make it with concert in London. I hope so that it will be. I'm very sure that there will be more concerts again in the future. Uh, so, and as, as uh, and for that, uh, or as long I I concentrate on the re releases. I mean, we have now the Trino next year. I want to. Definitely, I want to make this original uh, first of my temple with the original nice cover. Yeah. And then, okay, then make again the, the, uh, the uh, Seven Up album. Uh, I have already some, some additional material from Seven Up rehearsals, so I don't know if I will use it, but maybe as a, as a bonus or separately. Because, because I like with re releases, I like to have it. Very original. I like, don't like to change it. Or I don't like to add uh, more titles or more tracks. Or so, so I really want to have it in my catalog in, in its original form as much as possible. Yeah. And then the concept with the Klaus and Hartmut, which must be five or six uh, albums or vinyls. Yeah, I understand the really use of credit cards. Yeah, they are more. They are, yeah. you, but you have the, the, the master recorded the master tape to go yeah. back to the original and remaster it. And yeah. Yeah. yeah but in some cases, they're not that easy to go back to whatever, you know, the master tape or the record, record label has it will be difficult to get the original tape, right? No, no, no. I have master tape for for yeah for nearly all of it. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, uh, yes, I, so I started recording my own. And since I started recording my uh, inventions, I have my own studio. So anyway, I have all the tape. Yeah. And uh, from the very early concerts, I got. Yes, I had some, some, uh, I kept some tape. I got some more from, uh, from a friend in France who had a tape from the Paris concert. Um, wow. 
a lady who had a tape. This, this were bootleg tapes, yeah, but, but it doesn't matter. I mean, the quality is, is it doesn't matter. It's, it's a historic uh, value. Yeah. Yeah. These two, these two albums, uh, Manuel for uh, Concert for Humans, yeah. uh, and this one uh, died. I don't know how to pronounce it German, but Rude. Rude. Yeah, Rude. very, very good albums, man. I like that. It's different, but uh, Rude Rude. is a river in, in right? yeah, that's a river in middle of in Saxonia. And I played uh, music for an installation of uh, uh, a friend of mine, she made an installation of mirrors, 34 mirrors in the country. Yeah. And uh, I performed some minutes music to it, and initially it should have been only 10 minutes, but then I played for 40 minutes and <laughs> recorded it. And Concert from Mona is it's a music I performed live with an orchestra uh, called Old Black and White Mona. It was that's a movie from 1921, I think the first. The second uh, big movie from Mona, famous director, uh, and uh, there was no score, no. Uh, it's a kind of criminal story about uh, uh, the haunted castle in English party. <clears throat> and it's a funny story, and so I. I yeah, I, I was interested in, because my wife was doing films and for many years and uh, she's a producer, director, and she had also made, she'd make films about uh, history, German history, but also about music. Yeah. And she had made a film about an, uh, one of the last survivors or the last uh, Silent movie pianist who was still alive some years ago, who originally played in the 1920s to the silent movies. And he began to play again when he was 60, 70 years old, and he still played when he was 105. And he was still uh, accompanying live performances of movies. And they, now he died, but she made a film about him, a documentary. Wow. And uh, this was interesting to hear because he was also only improvising. There were no scores, so he just played the pictures, what he saw, what he has seen on, on the screen, uh, the situation or the atmosphere. So he just played like this. <laughs> he just started playing. Yeah. I, I like this. Yeah. 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 Good. But, uh, you, you, your wife told me that you were. I, I never told you, Manuel, but I was born in Chile. And I came to the United States to study, and I ended up staying here. And, and your wife told me that uh, you, you, some years ago, you guys were in Chile at the Goethe Institute. I think she was presenting some of her uh, film there. And uh, yeah, people, yeah. people, the people in Latin America, they, they love, they love your music, and they love electronic music, and you know, Tangerine Dream, and Klaus Schulze, and Peter Baumann, and all that. In Latin America, they. A lot of people like electronic music. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, if you if you if you go there, they will keep you for a week. You will play every night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and people will not get bored. You can do seven gigs in a row and then go to Argentina and go to. So yeah. did you, you have any you have any memories from the 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 trip? Yes, I have. Uh, from Chile, I have. Yes, uh, it was very nice with. Uh, even I was showing the the, the Garros Carousel at the Goethe Institute, mm -hmm. and then we were traveling around, and I had some some contacts there from the, already from the 1970s. There were fans sending me letters and asking, and I was sending them some records and so. On. So I had some contacts there, and even I had some private contacts. So we went very up to the north to Iquique. Yeah. yeah, and then back uh, through the through the uh, yeah, the uh, Atacama Desert. Yeah, yeah. And very interesting. And then to the south, to uh, we, we took a train to to Temuco, 
Yeah, wow. <laughs> Very good. And then really to the south, to Puta Arenas. Uh, uh, so, uh, so we had all the, the, the 3,000 kilometers, all the coastline. <laughs> and, uh, it was really interesting. And we stayed about three weeks or four weeks. And, and, uh, so, uh, and we are still friends with this. Uh, uh, the girl at the time who worked with the um, the Goethe Institute, yeah. she married uh, a diplomat, a Chilean, and uh, she, yeah, they had children. And we sometimes meet, and they invited us to see scenes in Italy, and we got to be a fun and a Chilean ambassador. I got you. Yeah, yeah. The, in, in Chile, you know, there is a big. Um, German community in the south of Chile, there are about 10,000 families that me. So my my family ancestor came from Munich. So my uh -huh. mother's last name is Hoferberg. So in 1882, 1882, there was a big migration from Germany to the south of Chile, and Italians went to Argentina. So in the south of Chile, is right now about I don't know, maybe 10,000 families. So there are many schools that are, you know, talk German. You know, they, the kids learn Spanish at home, but they, is their school in German. So it's a big mm -hmm. number. Mm -hmm. That's what my ancestor came from. One of the other reasons that I want to go to Germany is that, you know, I want to visit you and all the other musicians I interview in uh, Germany, but always I always go to Munich to see the grave where where the my ancestors come from. So I yes, 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 of course, yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. You never but, been to? Huh? You never been to Munich before? Oh no, I have been a couple of times. Yeah, in Berlin ah. never. I've been ah. in uh, in uh, Dusseldorf, in Cologne, uh, in Munich. Never in Berlin. Never in Berlin. And Berlin, I would go crazy with all. Because all the, you know, the, the beginning of electronic music probably started, you know, it started there in Berlin, you know, so. I, yeah. I, yeah, and, uh, yeah, you know that from the, from this uh, studio, Beach Studio, Electronic Beach Studio. I, I saw the name, right. It's still there? Excel still? No, 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 but there was a. Uh, uh, there was an, uh, there was a, a effort to make a, a, a plate. Uh, it, it's still a school, but and they mounted a plate on outside of the school. Here was the beach studio where Tangent Jean, Ashford, Bertrand, Schultz. Uh, this was uh, initiated by some people, very nice. And uh, yeah, so we had a. Unfortunately, it was not possible to have a big party because of Corona. It was last December. Uh, I think you can see some that when you go to my website. I think it should be there at, uh, at uh, under the news or so. It was one year ago. Okay. Well, it's still it, it's not it was not existing, but uh, it was a nice event because the the, the former leader a teacher at the at the Switch studio. Uh, he's still alive. He lives in Switzerland. He was not coming, but he has sent a, a, a video message and very nice Thomas Kessler. Gotcha. Gotcha. He has sent a video message with Google as well. You can see that. Have you the people that you play with this with Danger and Dream? Uh, on the real name. Have you ever played with Edgar Frosty? I mean, besides Klaus Schulze, have you ever played with Edgar Frosty or Peter Bauman or uh, Ulrich Schnauz or any of them? Any of them? No, no. Have you? No. No, I mean Edgar was Edgar was not ten years older than me, so it was yeah. a different uh, thing, and he had his group. And I mean, with a we were like. Often we met quite often in the beginning because we were both uh, in this beach studio, and then we were, of course, with the same record company or music production. Uh, and we all, and uh, so we met at meetings and in studios, and uh, yes, but we never performed. We performed 
separately. We played this um, the concert in Paris. The, the first concert was, was in Paris. Uh, yeah. We played, this, we played Ashma Temple, Chant and Dream, and Klaus Schulze solo. Yeah, so we all met there. And, yeah. And I also knew Baumann, of course, and I knew very well uh, Christoph Franke, uh, who played many years with, with Edgar. Yeah. Uh, before he moved, yeah, we had some some nice meetings, uh, and I knew him from the initial band agitation. Because he was a drummer in the beginning of the band agitation too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they were kind of yeah, schoolmates. <laughs> Got you, got you, got you. So you, um, how how we do it on time? Uh, you still have another couple minutes, or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> get get your coffee, get your water, yeah. So, and um, so I was thinking, you know, you have played in so many places, so many venues with a lot of different artists. Is any particular concert? that you look back in your life, Manuel, and you say, man, that concert in London was the best time that, the best time I ever played because the music was great, the atmosphere was great. Is any any particular memory of, uh, if you can pick one or two concerts that you have done, it's, I mean, probably. The, yeah, it's just many concerts. For example, one concert I remember very well, I like very much, but my first solo concert in when I performed, uh, when I had released um, uh, New Age of Earth in France yeah. in 1976, I was invited for a tour. Yeah. And this was my first tour that I played solo on stage, so without a band. And I remember the concert at the legendary Bataclan in Paris, uh, which became now uh, uh, Famous, yeah, sadly famous with, uh, yeah, with his famous. Uh, attacks from in, in two years ago. No, it was two years, two years, no, it was more ago, yeah, from years ago. Yeah. And I remember this concert because it was really nice and the audience was so uh, enthusiastic about this and uh, I couldn't believe it. I, I had such a such a long applause and. Uh, 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 I, I couldn't believe it. I remember that. It uh, was nice. But there are many more. There are so many nice concerts in Japan with, with, uh, on this big festival that I like very much. Uh, but, uh, but also the concert at the Lincoln Center, for example. Uh, so everything is special. It's, uh, it's difficult to say some, 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 uh, uh, yeah, of course you remember some little things uh, here and there, but uh, uh, no, there are so many concerts now. I, I've played many concerts in the last years with them, so this is, uh, I, I had not so many concerts in the 1980s and 1990s. Um, yeah, I have, I have never seen you playing live, so I... I know your music from the records, obviously, but hopefully one day I will have the opportunity to see you playing live, you know, in December or next year. I plan to go many times to Germany in the next, next year, so hopefully I will see you live one day and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course, somewhere, maybe. <laughs> you, need, you need to keep on playing. Don't retire, Manuel. You have many years in front of you and many people all over the world that... Love your music, man. So, you know, uh, uh, you know the co the co corona will go away hopefully soon, and then you know you can enjoy you know re-releasing your albums and uh, and play live and playing with a lot of great people. There are so many great musicians in, in in Germany as well, like yourself. I mean, they gotta you know for people that like electronic music. Uh, no, definitely, yeah, well. Your wife needs to keep you healthy, so you can keep keep forever. <laughs> I need I need to I need to talk to the 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 governor of uh, Berlin and make a statue of uh, Manuel Goshen with the E2 E4 playing like that with the hand with the keyboard or something. <laughs> <laughs>
Good, good. Well, well, it was very, you know, it was very nice uh, talking to you. Uh, it's, it's such an honor for me for the radio. This is interview number 100. So um, I, when I talked to your wife, I wanted to do something special. That's why, you know, there was, there was, is there is Manuel Goshi or, or nobody else, you know, right? <laughs> so I, I'm very grateful for your time and, uh, and say hello to your wife and, uh, and uh, I will see you in a couple of months. I'm quite sure we'll go out to dinner and then uh, get some beer. You you like Chilean wine? You like wine or, or your beer? Uh, I like wine for many years. I stopped. Uh, I, I had so much wine, <laughs> uh, and now I'm I'm more with beer. Yes. But uh, I stopped alcohol completely for ten years. Really? Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was very good. It was very. I think it was a good thing, and since then I think you know, some beer. But, you know. oh yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get together in Germany uh, for dinner with your wife, and then. Uh, I, I remember Chilean wine. Yes. Huh? I remember Chilean wine. Yes, when we were there, I was still drinking wine. I remember that. But, uh, but what I, I wanted to ask you: You make this is a radio program? In, yeah. So I uh, began doing. Um, during the pandemic in September last year, I opened one radio about soft rock. Then I opened another radio in jazz and rock. Then I opened an electronic music radio. And then I began for the jazz and rock, I began doing interviews. So what I do once this interview is over, I will send you the direct link for your social media account or whatever. I will upload the video to the website and then do one special about Manuel Goshin and special about Astra Temple. Uh, I would use, um, you know, the, the private tapes and maybe two or four play for entirety. And, and, and I, you know, some, that's, that's the idea. You know, the idea is for um, interview great musician and for, for you to benefit. And I will, I will put the link of, Astro Temple as well, so people can buy records from the website and stuff like that. I want you to benefit, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was very nice talking to you, Manuel. Say hello to your wife again, and then I will see you in a couple, a couple, a couple months in in, in Berlin, man. We'll go to dinner. Thank Good. you, thank you very great. much for your time, Manuel. Have a great evening. Thank you. And you think it has all recorded? Yes, I, will, all I, will, recorded. Yeah. I will stop the recording for now. No, no, I, I just asked if it's all fine with the recording. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the, it was, okay. it was, it was Good, okay then. Thank you and see you. See you very soon. Thank you again, Manuel. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.